Mira Bracaccio here. I made this video of pork chops with uh, red sauce and Parmesan cheese last week. But thanks to my editing department, and by editing department, I mean Maria, <laughs> she left out the beginning of the video. So all that I did in the beginning of the video was salt and pepper, center cup pork chops. I didn't find the ones with the bone in, so I used regular ones. And I got um, a message from Jamie today, Jamie Castile Dietz, and she said, Mir, do you have a recipe for pork chops? Because Charlie might eat them if it's your recipe. So this is for you guys. I hope you like it. So you can see how nice they're brown, both sides. So, because that's our flavor, okay? You don't need wine, you don't need anything with this fish. Now, usually I take out the garlic and add maybe three or four meat cloves, but this didn't burn, so I'm going to just keep that one in there. So, I'm going to turn off the gas, and we're going to braise this. So, when you braise something, you typically cover the meat three quarters of the way. You're not boiling it, you're braising it, okay? So, I use tomato sauce, okay? You don't like tomato sauce, you can use crushed tomatoes, it's up to you. So I'm going to take this off, even though the gas is off, I'm going to pour this over. Okay, so that's enough. And I'm going to turn my gas back on. Now, I, I had seared them on like a medium high heat, okay? And that's plenty in there, but I always like to thin it out with just a pinch of water. I just feel like it helps to, um, Braise it better, okay? So we're going to pour that in. And you can see it's not covering the meat. It's like three quarters of the way up. And this dish, you need bay leaf, okay? Dried bay leaf. I don't have any fresh. Summer comes in, and my friend goes to her shore home. She brings me, she has fresh bay leaves growing, and they're so beautiful. And I'm going to put a little parsley to start it. And I'm going to put some black pepper. Okay. Now, I'm going to put just a pinch of salt because this dish gets really, really coated with cheese. Now, I'm going to use Pecorino Romano. You can use Parmigiano also. I've used both. I like both. I just happen to have Pecorino Romano. So, I'm going to, it's at a boil. I'm going to lower it because we're going to braise it. So, you just want it to do that little, little bubble, okay? So we're going to put the lid on it. We're not going to put the cheese in until maybe the last 15 minutes of it cooking, okay? So we want to get them really tender. If they had a bone, you'd see they'd break away from the bone. Beautiful, okay? And it's a matter of your judgment, however long. I'm going to say these are going to take at least an hour. So I'm going to put the lid on. And I always, for some reason, for braising, usually you keep it tight. But for some reason, this dish, I like to keep a little bit of the steam coming out. So we'll come back when these are ready to add the cheese. I just took the lid off. It's been cooking about an hour. You can see how nice that looks, okay? So now I'm gonna add the cheese. Now normally, when you add cheese, you wanna turn the gas off. But for this dish, you need to put the cheese in and cook it on there, so. Mmm. Don't be afraid of the cheese. This dish needs it. I'm telling you, this is so good. Once you make this, I've probably been making this dish about 40 years without joking, okay? You know, a friend of mine's mother had made it, and I never even got the recipe from her. I just loved it so much. I went home, faked it, and now I just made it for my friend. She forgot her mother made it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that like that. I'm gonna put the lid back on. We'll cook it for another half hour. Because this pork chop is thick and it's not on a bone or anything, it's not going to get like real, real tender. It's going to be nice and tender enough to eat, but not like fall off the bone, pull apart pork. It's not that kind of a dish. So we give, and you know what? I might add a little drop of water to that, just to have a little more liquid. You see, it's three quarters of the way up, okay? And it's been on like a simmer. Technically, you could have put this in like a 250, 300 degree oven. Get it off your stove if you wanted to. I'm going to let this cook a half hour. I'm going to make my rice, and then I'm going to come back and show you how we plate it. Okay. So, I'm going to put 
so it's cooked another half hour so we're at a total of an hour and a half for this look at that mm -mm -mm. Does that look delicious or what so of course i'm going to serve it with my famous minute rice <laughs> i love minute rice i mean my friends will make fun of me i don't care for 14 years in a restaurant, I had to cook risottos, I had to cook real rice, I had to make pilafs. I want minute rice. I'm home now. I'm retired. So, let me show you how to plate this. We're going to put some rice, like I like it underneath. Okay. Okay. And so. I want to get one of these. You can see the cheese on it, how nice it is. Mm -hmm. That right there like that. You could serve some greens on the side if you want. I'm just going to have a salad tonight. And don't eat the bay leaves. You want to take them out. I see one right there. And this is the finished dish. I really think you're going to love this recipe. This is the only uh, kind of pork chop I can get my hands on today. It's going to be delicious, but if you can get it with the bone or even the, the nice big flat ones that has part of the center cut, and you know, it's like kind of like a T-bone or a sirloin steak. It's got all the different parts of the of the pork. They're so delicious because they come more tender. They come more tender, okay? So, I hope you like this recipe. If you do, please share it. If you make it, please let me know how you like it. And I'm drinking a French bread tonight. So, I just wanna say thanks for watching the videos. Stay safe and cheers to everybody.